I was always very interested in fitness. I played a lot of sports growing up. Nothing phases me anymore. I want to continue to wrestle nonstop whether I have the title or not, and I'm not afraid of whoever it is that wants to step up. I swear to you, any question you can have about moves, psychology, gimmicks, the history of pro wrestling, he knows. Lance Storm is an encyclopedia of wrestling knowledge. There's no off-season in this business. I'm just going to make sure I train my butt off in and out of the ring. It's like any normal job. There are people you butt heads with. The main thing is that while you might have difference of opinion, when you get into the ring, you take care of each other and you don't try to hurt the other person. Harry Potter is my favorite movie of all time. I always thought Magic Kingdom was supposed to be the happiest place on earth, where everything smells like waffle cones and cotton candy, but when I first went to Diagon Alley, I knew that was where I belonged. I love experiencing new cultures and new foods. When I first started out wrestling in front of 100 people, I thought, Chelsea, you're better than this. You should be working in front of thousands. But I was crazy. That's always the bucket list for me. Different countries, different experiences, different food. To be able to do that through work, I'm the luckiest person alive. The one consistent character in all of this is Chelsea Green, and that's how people know me, even as all else changes. I can go out and be the hot mess, or go hard in matches or be silly, and that's still all me. I think as females, we always want to have more air time, more room time more longer matches, and more main events. But, at the end of the day, we're going in that direction, and I'm happy with that, and I'm happy with the side everyone has taken in, women's wrestling. I've seen some amazing independent wrestling shows. I've seen high-quality matches. I've seen high-level talent. The people that have made a name for themselves and really just can wrestle have worked their butts off to get to that place. They definitely deserve a lot of respect. I think for female or male, it is very challenging on the independent scene. I don't have any influences. I influence people. People watch me. I knew I wanted to be a wrestler, so I became the best wrestler in wrestling history. I'm the best. I should win everything. As Laurel Van Ness, it's so much fun, and with that comes a creative outlet. You can be who you want to be and be that particular character. I'm so thankful that Impact allows me to do that. I always love to share my workout routines on my social media. Everything in Asia is a culture shock. It's very different from North America, but it's great to be forced into a situation to meet new people and learn new techniques. I love the UK, and I think a lot of people don't realize that I actually went to primary school in England. I don't know if anyone can say, oh, I know I'm going to get signed. You don't know what they're looking for. You might have excelled in ring, but you might not have excelled at promos. It's about giving it 110% and then having NXT want you in their family. 
I was lucky to find a way to get a visa as an independent worker, which is hard to do. On top of that, I do live in the States, which means I'm not taking my skills back to Canada. In wrestling, I don't consider it acting because it's improv. I love wrestling, but now wrestling is a job, it's my livelihood. Sometimes the job takes over and you forget to have fun and you forget to be creative and try new things. I am glad the world opened their eyes to female Japanese stars. I think people for so long paid attention to Mexico, Canada, Australia and England and never Japan. I'm going to give it my all, but I'm also going to know my worth, know that I have options, and that's the best feeling in the world. It's very hard when you start working as a wrestler to try and stop doing things that are second nature. For me, when I take a move and start selling, that is second nature for me. I don't think you can understand everything that goes into being a superstar, because even I don't understand everything. I think we're all learning as we go. I had never seen a pro wrestling ring until I was maybe around grade 11. Lance Storm taught me everything that I know. I worked on trying to get to Mexico, which was the first thing that I really wanted to do, but a couple of my girlfriends thought that I should learn how to wrestle before I go to Mexico, so I should try out in Japan. That is how I kind of got over there in Japan. Bound for Glory Week was such a whirlwind. With it being filmed in Canada, it was really exciting for me. Although it was on the East Coast and I'm from the West Coast, still felt like I was kind of in my hometown, I don't know. I knew nothing about wrestling. Sometimes that's a great thing. And sometimes that really annoys people in this industry, but that's the truth. I had no clue how to wrestle. I had to learn everything, absolutely everything, to start from the bottom. On Tough Enough, you're in a house with your competitors, living, eating and breathing with them. That's really tough. The name Laurel is such a strange choice because I think when you look at me, there's not one person that says, oh yeah, I could see you as a Laurel. I used to live in Devon when I was eight years old. My mom, my grandma, and grandpa are all British. I found that when I went to the ring as a bad guy, people hated that I took care of myself, that I went to the gym, that I had hair extensions, that I put makeup on. They hated that I was a girly girl. I thought, okay, I'm going to crank that up to 110% and make people really annoyed. As you progress in your career, your character progresses and evolves. I'd say I'm friends with 90% of the girls I meet. Every single year, I go through once the new year hits. I go through this moment where I kind of think about how far I've come and what's changed. I can compete anywhere. I can compete on Raw, on SmackDown, on Main Event. I can compete on 205 Live if they want me to. At the end of the day, if you're passionate about something, be passionate about it and be totally and ridiculously passionate about it. And I actually had to beg for my last tryout at NXT. Yeah, I actually had to send multiple emails to say, 
I want another tryout, and there's no reason you will not hire me after this tryout. And that was the tryout that they hired me from. I have never been a massive fan of intergender wrestling. I could never see myself getting in a ring and wrestling Zack Ryder. I might be able to high fly when I'm wrestling Pentagon. At the end of the day, Pentagon won that match. At the end of the day, I took 10 package pile drivers, so I don't really want to do that again. I lived in Calgary and a lot of old WWE. WWF and WCW guys went through Calgary whether to train or to work on the independent scene. When I lived there, I became immersed in all of this wrestling talk and it sparked my curiosity. I was on the computer one night, Raw came on and I saw a women's match. I thought, huh, I could do that. Next thing you know, I was knee-deep in wrestling. I go to the gym at least six times per week.